In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, may the peace and blessings of Allah be exalted be upon the Prophet Muhammad and his purified progeny. And may the damnation of Allah be upon their enemies. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our ninth episode. So in the last episode, we were discussing these narrations which talk about describing the merits of Ahlul Bayt السلام, and we said that although some of them have additions, variances in words, all of them mention the particular phrase that قُولُوا فِي فَضْلِنَا مَا شِئَتُمْ or basically similar to this that say anything you like regarding our merits and of course we left off saying that we do not deny the fada'il of Ahlul Bayt السلام, their lofty merits and status no one denies this from us and we said we are not even worthy of giving justice to their merits and fada'il what we did say is that we are against promoting exaggeration or making up merits things which do not exist and attributing them to the Imams alayhim as -salam. Some such as the Nawasib and the Ghulat may think according to this narration one can do so because just do not call us God but say anything about our merits. So we will see how we understand this phrase because as we said some of these people who are coming up as so-called reformist speakers are completely rejecting the narration based on Rijal but we are saying that even if by a Rijal standard it would be weak in the chain the matter and the content itself can be explained in the light of other narrations because if we take the illogical forced interpretation of the Nawasib that yeah you Shia you can say anything about them just that they're not God then does that mean that a Shia now can come and say that one of the Imams is better than the Prophet Muhammad and we know such a statement would take them out of Shiism such a statement would take them out of Tashayyuh does it mean they can come and say that they are prof prophets and messengers? no, of course not, one would not be able to say that but according to the illogical forced interpretation of the Nawasib and the Ghulat on these Ahadith which mention say anything about our merits as you like then yeah one would be able to do so because it's not putting them to rububiyyah it's not putting them to the status of lordship but one can call them prophets or better than the Prophet Muhammad according to how they would understand in their jahl in their ignorance of not reading other narrations and doing jam collecting all the rawayat and deriving a final conclusion which is coherent with the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad So what we said we would do is that we would look at a dua of Imam Rida alayhi salam, the eighth Shia Imam. In this dua, Imam Rida alayhi salam mentions a very important principle for us to understand these other narrations when it comes to speaking about the merits of the Prophet Muhammad and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And as far as the source of this du'a, now this is mentioned in Sheikh Saduk's book of al itiqadat al imamiyah a Shia creed or a Shiite creed. This book is of course mentioning various beliefs of the Shia and Sheikh Mufid actually corrected some of these things. Not all of it would be 100% correct according to all of the scholars and they have their commentary on it. But it mentions a good summary of the beliefs of the Shia which Sheikh Saduk has mentioned and he mentioned this dua of Imam Rida alayhi salam against the Ghulat. Now I've only found this dua itself within this book and I also believe Majlisi mentions it in Bihar al-Anwar obviously he got it from Sheikh Saduk's book I haven't seen it in any other sources it might be there or it could have existed in sources which have not reached us today because as we know all the books of Sheikh Saduk and other ulama did not reach us and we work with what we have so what we'll do is that we'll read the Arabic of this du'a and then obviously we will read the English translation. 
Now, obviously, this is a Shiite creed. Um, it's quite an old copy here from the 90s. I believe this is 1999. And the first copy of this book translation by the Wafis World Organization for Islamic Services in Tehran, the first actual publication of this was in 1982. Yes, in 1982. So some copies of this book and this is a third edition I believe have in 1999 are over 20 years old or 30 years old and we find that these old translations uh, were very profound in the words of vocabulary they used they were basically very accurate and a lot of effort was put into them whereas we find some days some of the translations unfortunately they're not there's not as much effort that is put into them and they can be doing for a lot of improvement but these ones from Wafis were very good translations and very old translations of course I'm not sure if they still translate anyhow what we'll do is we'll read the dua firstly in Arabic and then we'll go to the English translation of this Imam Rada alayhi salam he says Allahumma inni a'udhu bika wa abra'u ilayka min alladheena da'u lana ma laysa lana bihaq اللهم إني أبرأ إليك من الذين قالوا فينا ما لم نقل في أنفسنا اللهم لك الخلق ومنك الرزق وإياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اللهم, اللهم أنت خالقنا وخالق آبائنا الأولين وآبائنا الآخرين so Imam Reda alayhi salam, if we concentrate on one particular line, which is very important, he says, Allahumma inni abra'u ilayka min alladheena qalu feena ma lam naqul fi anfusina. Imam Reda alayhi salam does his disassociation from those who say things about them which they have not said about themselves. We'll go to the English translation. So Imam Reda alayhi salam says, O oh God, I seek absolution from thee in respect of thy strength and power. There is neither strength nor power except in thee, or save in thee. O oh God, I declare myself before thee as having nothing to do, so he's doing bara'ah, he's bari, as having nothing to do with those who assert in respect of us things which we have not said about ourselves or in respect of us things which we ourselves do not know so Imam Rida alayhi salam is refuting those such as the ghulat who make up statements and utter kufr about them which have nothing to do with their sayings or teachings this is of course a type of ghulu and we're going to mention this inshallah ta'ala in the narration after this dua Imam Rida alayhi salam, he is doing bara'a from them. So when we join this particular statement from Imam Rida alayhi salam, the eighth infallible Imam, and we join it to these ahadith speaking about merits, we then understand that when you speak about the merits of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, this is established merits for them, merits which exist merits which have a basis not things that you have made up from your own mouths and lies which you have made up which have nothing to do and have no basis they have nothing to do with Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam again Imam Rida alayhi salam says I declare myself before thee as have nothing to do with those who assert in respect of us things which we ourselves do not know so Imam Rida alayhi salam is putting emphasis here that we do not know these types of things which these people are bringing up and which they are saying. The Imam continues, O God, to thee belongs creation, and thou possessest the power of command. Thee alone do we worship, and from thee do we seek help. So he's quoting the verse from Surah Al Fatiha. O God, thou art our creator. So you can see in this translation there's quite old type of um, biblical English as we could say which being used um, which many of us are not used to reading however it's a very good translation thou art our creator and the creator of our ancestors near and remote 
O oh God, none deserves lordship save thee, and divinity, and divinity befits none except thee. So Imam Rida alayhi salam, and then he mentions the Nasara similar to the narration we showed from Imam Ali alayhi salam where he says that they have done ghulu and similar to how Allah Azza wa Jal says Ya Ahl al-Kitab la taghlu fi dinikum do not do exaggeration O people of the book in your religion so these lines if we pay attention to the first one we said if we join this when speaking about the merits of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam this would clearly show that you cannot make up those things which the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam do not know about themselves they have not said these things about themselves so you cannot go and make these things up we also see in the next part that um, creation is for Allah Azza wa Jal. So to say that some of the ghulat, they come out and they say the Imams, Allah Azza wa Jal created them and then they created, the Imams created everything in the whole universe. Another type of ghulu inshallah which we will speak about at a later time. And then Imam Rada, wa mink ar-rizq. So Allahumma lak al-khalq wa mink ar-rizq. So, and to you is the sustenance. Allah Azza wa Jal, He's the one that is Razzaq. He gives a rizq. Now, in the past, for example, I said myself in a lecture, I mentioned about the Prophet giving a rizq. However, I take this statement back due to new research and, um, that I've developed in this, this uh, subject. And there's a difference between the Imams السلام, and the Prophet asking for rizq for the servants. So, if someone asks them with the, uh, for rizq um, with the knowledge, an intention that they ask for this and believing that they give rizq. This is another discussion and this is something that we can discuss later on. But this dua would seem to deny that th about them creating, which we do not say that they created everything in this belief of tafawid, that Allah created them and then they created the whole universe or that they are the ones that give rizq. And then he mentions that وَإِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ We do, we only worship Allah and we only seek for Him help. And we do not worship the Imams like these Ghulat do. So this is very important. And then of course the next line, Imam Rida alayhi salam, Allahumma anta khaliquna. You are our creator. So not like some people again try to say that Imam Ali alayhi salam created everything and created the universe. They say by the permission of Allah, but this is still ghulu because the Ahlul Bayt denied this. And then he mentions that Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator of everyone and their forefathers and ancestors. So the line again, we analyze some of these other lines, but the main line that we wanted to focus on was that Allahumma inni abra'u ilayka min al-ladheena qalu feena ma lam naqul fi anfusina that oh Allah, I am free. I am disassociated from those who say things which we do not say about ourselves. So join in this sentence to the other ahadith would know that yes, if you want to praise the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam in the most eloquent of words or maybe your dialect or you know expressions which did not exist back then, then that is fine to do so as long as you are saying it about established merits. Merits which are established and have a basis within the ahadith and history and not those things that you make up. Otherwise, Imam Rida, according to this dua, would disassociate from these people. And again, we find another narration. So this was a dua mentioned by Sheikh Saduq. We go to the next narration which has a similar or same actual sentence where the Imam also says this same thing about disassociating from those who make up things which they do not know about themselves. So if we go to Al-Kafi and inshallah ta'ala I will put the reference on the screen we find that Imam Baqir alayhi salam, Imam Baqir the fifth Shia Imam Abu Ja'far was asked about what a ghali is, the definition of a ghali because in the first episode we mentioned that Ghulu is exceeding the limits and that they are those Ghulat mentioned within the narrations, the ones who said about the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam having Rububiyyah and putting them up to divine lordship and making them gods. And then we mentioned about the Ghali, the one who is not necessarily saying they are God, but is mentioning things which they themselves have not mentioned about themselves. So is this also mentioned in the ahadith? Let's go to the following narration. So when the Imam was asked who a ghali is, someone who is an exaggerator, the Imam gave the following definition. So it says, a man from the Ansar, people of Medina called Sa'ad, said, may Allah keep my soul in your service for your cause. What is the meaning of al-ghali? So, ju'iltu fidak, ma al-ghali? 
So the Imam said, قَالَ قَوْمٌ يَقُولُونَ فِيْنَا مَا لَا نَقُولُهُ فِي أَنفُسِنَا فَلَيْسَ أُولَٰئِكَ مِنَّا وَلَسْنَا مِنْهُمْ The Imam says here that the meaning of ghali is that they are a people, they are the people who say about us what we do not say about ourselves. Thus, they are not of our people and we are not of their people. So according to this narration of the Imam, the ghali is not merely the one who just says that the Ahlul Bayt have divine lordship or they make them as Allah Azza wa Jal. Rather, the ghali is also the one who says, يَقُولُونَ فِيْنَا مَا لَا نَقُولُهُ فِي أَنفُسِنَا The one who says things which we do not say about ourselves, so he makes up things. So the person brings up things on the minbar, let's say the pulpits, or spread things which are completely made up, that have no basis about Ahlul Bayt They are people who say about us which we ourselves do not know. They exceed the limits in this way and do this type of ghulu where they are making up things. And this is what has led to kufr and exaggeration because there might be these people on the mimra, they, they say things which have no basis and these get repeated around like they are gospel truth that they are, for example, in the ahadith and that these are actual sayings of the imams alayhim salam. And even on social media this has happened where someone finds a nice quote which is not from Imam Ali alayhi salam, but someone then puts Imam Ali's name in front of it and says, Imam Ali said the following, and then we end up with this quote being found someone else, some non-Muslim said the quote. Yeah, there's no problem. If someone who's not a Muslim can say beautiful words. We don't deny that, and they can even say wisdom. But we should not spread these quotes where we have realized they are actually falsely attributed. Or every land is, every day is Ashura, one of these ones, which is again, I've heard people, I heard someone with an imama years ago who said this is a hadith from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq and this was during Shah Ramadan and this is complete false attribution. This saying from Ali Shariati that uh, every land is uh, Karbala and every day is Ashura. This is not a hadith and it actually contradicts a hadith of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. So the imam in this hadith in Al-Kafi says that the ghali are those people who say about them things about them that they do not know themselves. And then he says that minna. So they are not from us, they are not from our Shia. You are not from the Shia if you attribute false things to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and things which have no basis and we are not from them. So the Imam again, just like the dua of Imam Rida alayhi salam does a type of disassociation and bara'a from these people who falsely attribute things to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. So again, a ghali is not just the one who says that Ahlul Bayt are gods or make them partners with Allah. Rather, the ghali, the other second type that I mentioned in the first lecture, we're now in the ninth lecture, is the one who falsely attributes statements to the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam, or says things which they haven't said about themselves. And also we find other people who they'll quote a very isolated line from a very doubtful khutbah which is rejected by many such as khutbah bayan which would make one a mushrik if they took many of the lines on the apparent of this uh, uh, khutbah although many of it is rejected by the ulama as it contains ghulu they will take one isolated line which is not proven in any other sources and then attribute it to imam ali alayhi salam when they know that such a khutbah even by the language it has problems according to the scholars about the Arabic language in it and it has problems according to the statements that it's not how the Imam speak they will still attribute this to the Imam and then after that they so we'll just read this sentence one more time the Imam said they are the people who say about us what we do not say about ourselves thus they are not of our people and we are not of their people and then he asked him what is the tali and the Imam said the tali they are those who search for good, they receive good instructions from our Shi'an brackets and are rewarded for it. So to conclude this episode, dear brothers and sisters, Say whatever you want by our merits. We have this narration here. So now Asib come and say you can say anything, Ghulat say anything. But then at the same time we have the narrations from the other side where the Imams are coming and saying that 
they are free from those people. Just like Imam Baqir said and Imam Rida, who say false things about them. We join these two narrations together and we would understand that when you want to praise Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam, you say things about their merits, established merits, which are not lies, which are not kufr, which are not made up, that you didn't get from your pocket or some dodgy khatib, some dodgy zakir. And you say and relate these merits in a way which is nice and befitting and maybe in words which did not even exist in their time, but which are relating merits which are established. Merits that are established within the sources. So this is what I mean, dear brothers and sisters. One doesn't just need to go by the Rajal approach. Oh, we reject it all. Having a holistic reading of these narrations can give you a good understanding together where now when we would read these narrations together we know that we cannot just say anything about them apart from giving them just that status of rububiyyah of divine lordship and again if we took that understanding of Nawasib and Ghulat to abuse this narration then we would say yes okay I'm not allowed to say that they're gods but then the Imams or Imam Ali is greater than the Prophet Imam Ali for example is higher than the Prophet in his station and is a Prophet Imam Ali. All of this stuff is nonsense. You would not be able to say this because they haven't said this about themselves. And we will show this according to other narrations. We will read other narrations which further help us understand the initial narrations about say anything of their merits and we'll analyze these inshallah ta'ala. So please join us for the next episode and we will further go into the fallacious arguments of Nawasib and Ghulat about this narration and show how it cannot be understood in that sense that they're trying to push forward that one can just say anything apart from calling the Ahlul Bayt gods and we will read those narrations which also forbid this and give us a more holistic understanding so please join me for the 10th episode and it's recommended to watch all of these episodes together until we finish the discussion about this particular hadith and we'll touch on other aspects as well relating to it and about what abd means and its various usages. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wa la'an a'da'ahum.